This hour of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by my good friends at Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold is a five-star rated gold company with one-of-a-kind customer service. And when it comes to gold and precious metals, Advantage Gold is the only company I'll work with. Call Advantage Gold today and make sure you let them know that Mark Levin sent you. And now, let's begin. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. The official position of Biden, the Biden lawyers, the Democrats in Congress is Joe Biden is not an imbecile. And the special counsel should not have called him an imbecile. And yet that's the only defense which isn't even really a defense, that the special counsel said Biden could invoke if he were to indict Joe Biden and bring the case to a Democrat jury in Washington, D.C., where he said there's no reasonable expectation that they would find him guilty. A brilliant lawyer friend of mine and my family, Nat Lewin, who's located innumerable cases, including in front of the United States Supreme Court, sent me a note. And that Lewin said, really? Well, if Joe Biden had been indicted and the case were heard in a Republican town, in a red state, would it still be the position of the special counsel that Joe Biden wouldn't be convicted. Of course he'd be convicted. His point being, you bring the charges as they come. And the idea that he wouldn't be convicted, perhaps not in Washington, D.C., but as a matter of law, as a matter of law based on the facts, is not and should not be the case. You might remember when this report first came out, it was quite substantial. I went on Blaze and I went on the Fox. I waved it around and I said, this report provides material, specific evidence of more than a score of felonies committed by Joe Biden senator, Joe Biden private citizen, Joe Biden vice president of the United States under the 1917 Espionage Act. And the argument that he cooperated once he was caught 40 years later is not acceptable. As I said then, and others have since repeated because they're smart to repeat it. That's not a defense. When you murder somebody, when you steal something, when you embezzle, but I cooperated after I was caught. And so this issue of obstruction in Donald Trump, let me deal with this as a footnote. Under normal circumstances, with an attorney general who wasn't a hack of the president, with a real 
experienced domestic prosecutor, not a hatchet man, like special counsel, for which there is no special, Jack Smith, there would never have been a criminal process. You don't criminalize these cases, certainly not against a former president who has special executive authority under the Constitution. He is the executive branch. How can he steal stuff from himself? And when a president takes documents with him, because he is the executive branch, he is the second branch of government, he cannot be said to be stealing classified information or violating the Espionage Act, because he can't. So they raise these unique constitutional, perverse constitutional questions because they're out to get his scalp. I am the only one that I know of on Fox, on Blaze, on radio, who talks about these things, who served as chief of staff to a former attorney general of the United States of America. One of the greatest of all time, one of the strongest when it came to law enforcement. There is no way in hell he would have approved a criminal warrant against the next president when they're debating the issue of whether or not he can keep the documents or not in negotiating. There's no way. There's no way he would approve the use of FBI SWAT teams to go to the former president's home to seize the document. It never would have happened. If Attorney General Meese thought somebody was intransigent or that there was something we could do, first thing he would do is pick up the phone. And he'd call the individual and he'd say, hey, look, we got to have this material. We don't want to create a whole, you know, issue here. This is the situation. And if that didn't work, maybe, maybe, not likely, but maybe he'd pursue it on the civil side. On the civil side. There is no way in hell. He would have gone for a search warrant, sent a SWAT team, seized the documents, create an obstruction scenario, and then indict a former president who's already announced that he's running for the presidency again. It never would have happened. Never. Not under Ed Meese. Might have happened under Bill Barr. But it never would have happened under Ed Meese. Ever. Ever. The special counsel report concludes that Biden repeatedly violated the Espionage Act. He committed felony after felony over a period of decades in different offices and out of office. That he lied about it on key occasions, including when he was talking to his ghostwriter. None of this should be a surprise to you. I discussed it thoroughly and extensively with you right here behind this microphone as well as on Blaze and on Fox. That's the truth. Which is why people are talking about a double standard. Here you have Joe Biden, according to this report, who left the material in seven different places over the course of his career. Two different places where he lived, different places with his office, and kept moving it around. Donald Trump took documents with him, or people packed the documents for him, and he took them with him on a helicopter to Mar-a-Lago. That's it. That's it. Hillary Clinton's not prosecuted. She wasn't charged. Even though the case is overwhelming, multiple felonies, if you want to apply them under the Espionage Act, she wasn't even vice president. She was secretary of state, for God's sakes. She's not protected. She doesn't run the executive branch. She's an appointee. She has no independent declassification powers at all. Neither did Biden at the time we're talking about. None. He literally stole documents out of the Senate skiff. There is no defense for that. And he kept it for decades. No defense whatsoever. None. There's no defense when the man says to his ghostwriter, they don't know that I have these. What were these? Notebooks of his card notes of classified information. Even his staff tried to get that from him before he left. But he kept them in secret and then he used them with the ghostwriter. To make money on a book. 
That's what happened. Trump had his documents. That's a former president, Mar-a-Lago. Biden had him in open boxes. He had him in his garage. He had it where people could access it. Mar-a-Lago is like a fort. You only get in if they let you in. It's guarded by the Secret Service. Now, this was a fascinating hearing. So we're going to take a break, and I want you to hear some of this, because most of you in this audience, you actually don't have time to watch TV all day long and to watch these hearings all day long. I will help you. This is information I want to confer on you, because according to the Democrat Party, they know Joe Biden is a crook. They know that he took money from communist China. They know they didn't pay all his taxes. He set up two S corporations while he's yelling about people paying their fair share. They know all about, we know all about Joe Biden, a reprobate, a career hack politician who's never spent a single day in the private sector, not one, but wants to run it with an iron fist. Who is this man? This self-serving, self-promoting, self-aggrandizing narcissist. Well, I just defined him. And so now you see Mr. Herr has to be destroyed. Not Mr. Smith, who changes the law, who demands that the courts comply with his demands. He cuts short <clears throat> due process rights, attorney-client privilege, the right to appeal. He and his favorite judges in Washington, D.C., they're destroying the system while claiming to protect it against the man that they're targeting. Her didn't do any of that. Her was praised. He was quiet. Oh, he's a good Republican. Because they didn't fear her. Because he's not a Jack Smith. He's not a Weissman. And so he puts out this report. And they are desperate to smother it and him. And yet, like with Comey, the report goes on and on. You go, okay, wow, this is unbelievable. But we're not going to charge him. Amazing, isn't it? Joe Biden escapes accountability, number one, because he's president. But if her were Jack Smith, he would have indicted him anyway and said, uh, that's not in the law. That's been a position of the Department of Justice, but we need the courts to sort this out. Because Jack Smith is burning down all comity, C-O-M-I-T-Y, all traditions, all precedent when it comes to the law. Because that's what the man does. He's a nut. He's an absolute nut. Here, her says, no, we got to worry about that. Plus, you know, the jury in Washington, you know, he won't say it, but I'll say it. They won't ever convict a Joe Biden. No. But they can't wait to convict a Donald Trump. And that's what Nat Lewin's point was. They bring the case against Trump in Washington, D.C. because they, they figure it's, it's a slam dunk. The judges, the jury, the press. But they don't bring one against Biden because they know it's a slam dunk in the opposite direction. Because there isn't equal justice in Washington, D.C. There isn't equal justice with the Injustice Department. There's certainly no equal justice with that crooked creep Joe Biden. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched 
untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800-900-8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. All right, let's take a listen, folks. Special counsel are here at the hearing on Biden. Cut one, go. There has been a lot of attention paid to language in the report about the president's memory, so let me say a few words about that. My task was to determine whether the president retained or disclosed national defense information willfully. That means knowingly and with the intent to do something the law forbids. I could not make that determination without assessing the president's state of mind. For that reason, I had to consider the president's memory and overall mental state and how a jury likely would perceive his memory and mental state in a criminal trial. These are the types of issues that prosecutors analyze every day. And because these issues were important to my ultimate decision, I had to include a discussion of them in my report to the Attorney General. The evidence and the president himself put his memory squarely at issue. We interviewed the president and asked him about his recorded statement. Quote, I just found all the classified stuff downstairs, end quote. He told us that he didn't remember saying that to his ghostwriter. He also said he didn't remember finding any classified material in his home after his vice presidency. And he didn't remember anything about how classified documents about Afghanistan made their way into his garage. My assessment in the report about the relevance of the president's memory was necessary and accurate and fair. Most importantly, what I wrote is what I believe the evidence shows and what I expect jurors would perceive and believe. I did not sanitize my explanation, nor did I disparage the president unfairly. I explained to the Attorney General my decision and the reasons for it. That's what I was required to do. There you go. So here comes Jamie Raskin, a Marxist like his daddy. And his whole goal in life is to have a one-party state, much like these communist regimes, the Democrat Party, and he will destroy any institution. He will twist any phrase of the Constitution. He will be a Svengali in any form and in every way toward that end. And he's a coward to boot. He won't come on the program. I'd love to confront this fool, but so be it. Cut to go. This, my friends, this is a memory test. By the way, we're not your friend, jackass. Go ahead. It's not a memory test for President Biden. Oh. It's a memory test for all of America. Ooh, let's Do we remember out. fascism? Yeah. Do we remember Nazism? Yeah. Remember communism and totalitarianism? Oh, Have you mean your daddy? Yeah, we remember. Go ahead. Gotten the sacrifices of our parents and grandparents in prior generations. Uh, uh, hold, on, hold, hold on a second. So Hitler, Stalin, and Mao. For Jamie Raskin, a commie. This situation reminds him of that. Everybody's Hitler, everybody's Stalin, everyone's Mussolini. He's projecting. He's projecting. The Democrat Party is not a party, as I explained in the Democrat Party Hates America, folks. The Democrat Party is an autocratic entity that seeks power and monopoly power. So that's who Raskin is. Raskin is the best representative of American Marxism, not of America but American Marxism. We'll be right back. Attention, fellow Americans. Mark Levin here with a warning and a solution. I feel like our country is being destroyed by out-of-control spending and debt thanks to Biden and the American Marxists. 
And your hard-earned savings and retirement could be at risk from their socialist schemes. That's why you should consider Advantage Gold the best of the best, a U.S.-based company that specializes in helping everyday Americans protect their wealth. They have a simple solution to help you even potentially grow your wealth, despite the attacks from Washington. I urge you to register for their upcoming Gold and Silver Summit. It's fabulous. A free online event where you'll learn tips to help safeguard your finances by diversifying into physical precious metals. Call 800-900-8000. Call them right now to sign up securely for this pivotal summit. It is crucial. Tell them Mark Levin sent you for a special bonus. Call 800-900-8000 right now. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. You're listening to Denali, the great one. The great one. And you can call in now, 877-381-3811. Now listen very carefully to this from Robert Herr when asked a question by Jim Jordan. Cut for a go. And did the White House get the report before the report was made public? We did provide a draft of the report to the White House Counsel's Office and members of the president's personal counsel team for their review. No, I understand. And did the White House then, once they got the report before it went public, did the White House try to weigh in with, with your investigation on elements of that report and, frankly, get the report changed? They did request certain edits and changes to the draft report. Now, as a matter of process, the, the subject of the report does get to see the report. So I don't want you to think that was dirty handed. But what's interesting is they tried to change the report. They tried to change the report. More cut five. Go. Because here's the scary part. Page 200. I said this earlier in my opening statement. Page 200. Joe Biden. This is a quote. Joe Biden risked serious damage to America's national security when he shared information with his ghostwriter. Shared it with his ghostwriter, the guy who was helping Joe Biden get eight million dollars. And oh, by the way, Mr. Herr, what did that ghostwriter do with the information Joe Biden shared with him on his laptop? What did he do after you were named special counsel? Chairman, if you're referring to the audio recordings that Mr. Zwanitzer created of his conversations with exactly what I'm referring to, he he. uh, he slid, if I remember correctly, he slid those files into his uh, recycle bin on his computer. Tried to, tried to destroy the evidence, didn't he? Correct. Unbelievable. Now, I've talked about this. It's right in the report. But here's the man himself testifying. Here's the man himself repeating it. So the ghostwriter tries to kill the audio. The White House tries to change the report. Joe Biden committed numerous violations of the Espionage Act, which did and does, in fact, apply to him before he became president. No issue about declassification, since he independently does not have that authority. Trump does. Let's go to cut six, please. Go. February 8th, the White Matt House. Que- Mr. President, why did you share classified information with your ghostwriter? The President, I did not share classified information. I did not share it. I guarantee I did not. That's not true, is it, Mr. Herr? That is inconsistent with the findings based on the evidence in, in my report. Yes, yeah, so it's a lie. It's just what regular people would say, right? <laughs> yeah, all right. So the next one. And all the stuff that was in my home was in filing cabinets that were either locked or able to be locked. That wasn't true either, was it? That was inconsistent with the findings of our investigation. Another lie, people might say, right? Because what you put in your report was, among the places Mr. Biden's lawyers found classified documents in the garage was a damaged open box. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, these are all felonies. All felonies without, without a defense other than he's an imbecile. And the White House and their lawyers and the Democrat Party and their media are jumping up and down about how unfair this is. I want yourself, you folks to put yourselves in this position and see how you would be treated. How you would be treated, whether it's the corruption and the money laundered through the family. 
pressuring the prior Ukrainian government to fire its prosecutor because he was looking into Burisma, the board on which his son sits or sat. It goes on. Pramila Jayapal, another Marxist, she's desperately and aggressively trying to say that Joe Biden was exonerated. You see the two tiers of justice here? You see the two tiers of, of politics here? And of course, whatever the Democrats say, the, Rep- the Democrat media will regurgitate and vice versa. Cut seven, go. So this lengthy, expensive, and independent investigation resulted in a complete exoneration of President Joe Biden. For every document you discussed in your report, you found insufficient evidence that the president violated any laws about possession or retention of classified materials. The primary law that you analyzed for potential prosecution was part of the Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C. 793E, which criminalizes willful retention or disclosure of national defense information. Is that correct? Congresswoman, that is one statute that we analyzed. I need to um, go back and, and make sure that I take, take note of the word that you used, uh, exoneration. That Mr. is not a word Her, that I'm going to continue report, with my questions. My task as I'm going to continue with my questions. I know that, that I the term. I ultimately reached I know that whether the term, sufficient evidence existed such that the likely you outcome. You, you exonerated would be a conviction. Him. I know that I the term willful him. That retention does not in the has a. Mr. Hurd, it's my time. Thank you. What an a hole. What a, what a puke. Maybe she should be put under oath and testify about what's in the report, because she's a walking, talking pile of lies. Let me put it that way. She's another Marxist. Just like your buddy Raskin. They're all sitting on this committee. He never said he was exonerated. It's not in the report. And what they're saying is, is because you didn't charge him, Therefore, you exonerated him. And these are lies. All you have to do is read the report. Now we have Representative Hank Johnson, one of the, uh, the low IQ folks. I think Raskin is a low IQ. I think he has a high competency level for the lie and the disinformation and the deceit. But I think he has a low IQ. But so does Hank Johnson. Cut eight, go. But you are a Republican, though, aren't you? I am a registered Republican. Yes, sir. And you're doing everything you can do to get President Trump reelected so that you can get appointed as a federal judge or perhaps to another (laughs) position. Now, where does this come from, you see? Does this come with the, uh, what did he say? One of the islands is sinking because too many people are on one side or the other. Is this the guy, Mr. Producer? Guam, Guam sinking. Okay, great. And, of course, he's elected uh, for the rest of his life. Now, where does that come from? He's accusing the man of selling his office like Biden does. You did this because you want a judgeship. Go ahead. Department of Justice, isn't that correct? Congressman, I have no such aspirations, I can assure you. And I can tell you that partisan politics had no place whatsoever in my work. It had no place in the, in the investigative steps that I took. It had no place in the decision that I made. And it had no place in a single word of my report. Doesn't matter what you say, Mr. Her. You don't understand, or maybe you do. This isn't about your report. This isn't about you. This is about... Destroying anything in their way for power. You've got to understand this. No matter what, power. They know Joe Biden is not mentally fit to be president. They know he and his family are filled with crooks. They know his racist, segregationist, and bigoted history. They know all these things, and they could give a damn. They want that power. They want to destroy your lifestyle. They want to destroy the country and replace it with an iron-fisted police state to force you to do what they tell you to do. This is the biggest power grab in our history. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. My fellow Americans, we're living in very perilous economic times. Washington seems determined to bankrupt our nation with endless stimulus spending. As they devalue our dollar, hardworking Americans like you could lose everything. That's why I urge you strongly 
register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. They'll teach you how to help guard your wealth using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and Silver can offer a defense against the dollar's devaluation. And the experts at Advantage Gold will explain how you can convert some of your savings into precious metals that can protect and potentially grow your wealth. With currency debasement from Washington and global uncertainty on the rise, gold and silver diversification can could offer you some stability. Call 800-900-8000 right now to sign up. 800-900-8000 now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. This hearing went on for much of the day, five hours in the afternoon, so you're Barry, barely hearing the surface of it, but I want to play a little bit more as the uh, program goes on so you, you understand exactly what we're talking about here. It's really quite astonishing. I mean, if you're a Democrat and you want Soros prosecutors who don't prosecute rapists and murders, if you're a Democrat and you want felons to vote, if you're a Democrat and you want to destroy our voting system and then pretend that you're the ones who are standing for the franchise. If you're a Democrat or you're cheering these DAs on and asking them to act faster in these Democrat cities to get a conviction so you can run that Donald Trump is a convicted felon or you're trying to ban him from the ballot, then this is par for the course, you see. Par for the course. Listen to this clown, Steve Cohen. He's uh, mentally uh, debilitated. I think he walked into a wall several times. Here he is. Cut nine, go. Mr. Biden sat through five hours, and he did an admirable job. And he did an outstanding job in the State of the Union, laying out the case for the wow, future Wow, he of sat for five hours. How presidential. Wow. For five hours? Who could do that? And the State of the Union, I mean, that was an hour and what, five, eight minutes? Oh, wow. He's demonstrated he's capable of being president because he can sit and hear himself talk for five hours and during the State of Confusion speech. Wow. Admirable. According to this sleazeball, Stevie Cohen. Go ahead. For the middle class. For the freedom, for democracy around the world, for standing what is Joe up- Biden doing for democracy around the world? What's he doing in the Middle East? What's he doing with Afghanistan now that he blew that up? What's he doing with communist China that's running all over him and Russia? <coughs> they're laughing at the clown. Go ahead. Not bend, bending down to them. That's what's important. Not if you can be like on the sixty-four thousand dollar question. What does this have to do with the report, dummy? I don't know, the people who elect this guy, are you that stupid? Are you that stupid? He's not done. Go ahead. Legit. And answering every single question correctly. That's not what you need to be president. To be president, you need to have values. You need to have right. understanding. Right, answer every question. He lied, ladies and gentlemen. He said he didn't have the material he had. He said it was either in file cabinets or locked file cabinets. He lied. And those aren't the only two occasions. It's throughout the report. But he's counting on nobody knowing what's in the report. Go ahead. Values America has and needs to maintain to keep the world safe and peaceful. That's dealing with Ukraine. That's dealing with difficult people like Netanyahu and Israel to try to get something done that's correct. Netanyahu. It's Netanyahu, you idiot. So now it's Netanyahu and it's Trump. I don't know. It was Netanyahu there in 1976. When Biden stole the documents out of the Senate skiff, stole the doc. You're not even allowed to have staffers in the Senate skiff to steal documents out of the skiff because there's a camera out there. You have to literally pull a Sandy Berger of sorts, fold them up and stick them in your jacket or your pants, Mr. Producer. That's what he did. But here's this punk Cohen. It's an embarrassment. Now Robert Hurd dealing with Adam Schiff, who's a lowlife, who may wind up in the Senate, God forbid. Not in the Russian Senate, in ours. Go ahead. 
be well, my what decision. What you did write was deeply prejudicial to the interests of the president. You say it wasn't political, and yet you must have understood. Oh, it was prejudi- pre- prejudicial? You can't be prejudicial to Biden. He bowed down on bended knee. Prejudicial for pointing out that he's a nitwit and then allowing his nitwittery to be a defense to charging him? I mean, honestly, these Democrats should be thanking you. Except they're power hungry. They want it both ways. He's not a nitwit. You shouldn't have said he's a nitwit. In fact, you shouldn't have written the report. You're a Republican. You want a judgeship. And in fact, and on and on it goes. Go ahead. You must have understood the impact of your words. You must have understood the impact of your decision to go beyond the specifics of a particular document to go to the very general, to your own personal prejudicial... Hey, hey, Schiff, I don't know the last time you practiced law. There's something called mens rea. There's something called a pattern. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, this guy writing a report that ignores everything that he heard and saw? That's what Schiff wants. He wants a Schiff report. They're demanding... That everybody bend to their power and their will. They're demanding cover-ups. They're demanding censorship. And then they create fictions, lies about Trump. Using statutes that haven't even been used before or statutes that have never been used this way before. (coughs) Schiff. Go ahead. The president, one you knew would be amplified by his political opponent. When you knew that would influence a political campaign. Oh, my God. Here they are interfering with the election, trying to put the. The putative nominee, of the party opposite, the Republican Party in prison, even before there's an election. So both Joe Biden doesn't have anyone to run against. You see, that's the go- nobody's even talking about that. The Democrats don't want Joe Biden running against anybody. Got it. Because if Trump's convicted of something or even thrown in prison late October, There's no way for the Republicans to put a Republican on the ballot. And even if they could, they won't have a campaign infrastructure. They won't have the funds. They won't have the name ID. It's all Stalinist. All of it. Go ahead. Stand that. And you did it anyway. You did it anyway. And 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 that's enough. Republican Kelly Armstrong. Cut 11. Go. Classified documents were found at the Penn Biden Center. That's correct. They were found in President Biden's garage? In Wilmington, Delaware, yes. And in his basement den? Also in the same home, yes. In the major, and his main floor office? Correct. And his third floor den? Correct. At the University of Delaware? Correct. And at the Biden Institute? Correct. Right. And the elements of the crime for this, I mean, we, can't, we get into all of this, but the elements of the crime are pretty simple, right? The president, or president Biden had under, unauthorized possession of a document, writing, or note. That's correct. Correct. And that the document, writing, or note related to national defense. Correct. And that the defendant, and we may talk about the willfully part here in a second, retained the document, writing, or note, and failed to deliver it to an employee or officer entitled to receive it. Correct. There is a willfulness intent element, as you say. And, but those are the elements of the crime. Uh, including the intent element, yes. Yeah. Okay, at seven places he left documents. So that's places. But also the carrying of the information in a briefcase, which he did, according to the report. See, somebody had to read the report. The carrying the information, quote unquote, on his person. The using the information in an open area. And on and on and on. So they found it in seven locations, but there's myriad cases in which he actually violated the treatment and usage of classified information. And again, he's not the president. He doesn't have this authority. As vice president, as senator, he stole the documents out of the skiff from the United States government. And as a private citizen, he had the information and he shared the information with a ghostwriter and said, they don't know I have these, quote unquote. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. 
Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-321-381. Hold on, I'm doing my Joe Biden. 381-3811. Three eight one three eight one one. I've only been doing this. What's today? So the Democrat Party and their media do everything they possibly can. Everything they possibly can to cover up who they are and to cover up for their boy, Joe Biden. And uh, the question is whether people even care who vote Democrat. I suspect they don't. Now, they released a transcript, or at least part of one, that is unbelievable. The extent of Biden's insanility. It just is. And you have to believe that they pumped him up with something for the State of the Union address. Now, all those who say they haven't, well, let's see his medical lists. But the media lie for him, and he lies for himself. And uh, let's see if we have it here now. Hold on one second. I'm trying to secure something. One, 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 one second. Oh, okay. And, uh, of course, when I need it, the computer freezes. But I have my iPhone. And here it is. Count to ten, Mr. Producer. <laughs> Jesus. Live radio. That's the nature of the beast here. All right, we got it. Over at Breitbart. DOJ interview transcript, Joe Biden made car noises, often meandered off topic. And this is why, of course, even the people around him try and keep him protected like a, 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 veal, calf, a veal calf. The transcript of Biden's interview with special counsel, her, showed the president frequently wandered off topics, even making car noises. <laughs> I bet he's a blast at parties, this guy. The transcript obtained by Breitbart News in advance of her testimony to the House Judiciary Committee showed a prosecutor had asked Biden about his beloved Corvette, trying to pinpoint the time of when classified documents were moved to make room for the car in his home garage. Attorney Mark Crickbaum asked Biden, do you remember whether it was when the Corvette was coming back after the Jay Leno show. So in other words, it goes out for Jay Leno. Eventually it comes back. Biden responded. Oh no, it was, it was in and out for a bunch of reasons before starting to chatter away because it, it drove me crazy. He said, I wanted to drive it. Uh, and then the attorney responded, got it. That makes sense. A beautiful car, according to the transcript. Biden then proceeded to talk about his car and make car noises. And the worst part was they said I couldn't drive it outside the driveway. It's a long driveway. So I'd get to the bottom of the driveway, take it up to about four grand, indecipherable. Makes the car noise. Again, indecipherable. Then he laughs. And that's the end of the sentence. Biden then started talking about cars in general before her interrupted with, sir, I'd I'd love to hear much more about this, but I do have a few more questions to get through. Democrats are saying this is a hit job. No, it's suicide by the Democrat Party. With any luck, they're destroying any chances they have. Biden ignored the special counsel and continued talking about cars, to which her finally said, all right, so let's... Let's launch into the next subject, which relates to Penn Biden Center. Another portion of the transcript shows her asking Biden about the time he lived at the Naval Observatory as vice president that ended up with Biden discussing a man losing part of his testicles and penis. Her said, so now let's talk about the Naval Observatory. So you've been living there for eight years. So at the end of your vice presidency, what kind of papers or documents or files were at the Naval Observatory? You were preparing to leave and move out. 
Biden then launched into a long-winded story where he talked about waiting for bar exam results and working for a law firm in the meantime that was representing a young man. And he said, and this poor kid is down a hundred foot vessel, chimney, scraping the hydrogen bubbles off the inside. They were made to shut the plant down once every whenever. About eight months or six months a year. See, this isn't even coherent. Whatever it is. And he was wearing the wrong pants, wrong jeans. And he, a spark caught fire and got caught in the containment vessel. And he lost part of his penis and one of his testicles. And he was 23 years old. You believe this, Mr. Producer? I'm sure they'll read this on the morning schmo. I'm sure they'll read this throughout the day on the Communist News Network. I'm sure it'll be front page headlines on the New York Slimes. And then they try to make you believe that Donald Trump has this mental issue. It's just ridiculous. If they're continuing about how he got involved in politics, her finally interrupted him again, saying, so, sir, the material that you ju- that you remember having, again, trying to steer us, back to the end of your vice presidency and focusing on your move out of the Naval Observatory. Biden also meandered off on tangent when asked, did you bring classified material with you from the West Wing or the Naval Observatory to your lake house? Hell, he has a lake house too. Biden responded, but then veered off into a detailed description of his office and pictures before recalling a trip to Mongolia. You know, I went to Mongolia... (laughs) You know, uh, you clowns at SNL, you don't even have to write a script. You just take this transcript and use it. Right, Mr. Producer? You know, I went to Mongolia Mongolia, and, uh, and great pictures. I unfortunately embarrassed the hell out of the leader of Mongolia. So we're out in the middle of nowhere, and they're looking up on the hill, and we see this tiny line. You know, it's a 20-mile horse race with all these kids under the age of 16 on horseback, Racing to come home. And you know, there are sumo wrestlers doing everything they do. Okay. Biden continued to talk about how he was handed a a bow and arrow and he hit a target on the hay bale. After this story, one of the attorneys requested to take a break. You see, this is what they were dealing with. And the Democrats are telling you, he was five years, five hours there. He demonstrated his wits. He demonstrated, he demonstrated how capable he is. That's why they pumped him up for the State state of the Union address, in my view, my personal view. <clears throat> We're going to have a special guest in a moment. But to build a foundation for this special guest, I want you to hear Jackie Heinrich, who is a fantastic reporter at Fox, the only reporter to literally confront uh, the White House about their use of the Hamas numbers. Cut 15, go. Why was the president in that interview using the... Gaza Ministry of Health, just run by Hamas, their numbers on the death toll in Gaza, it, they, there was a 30,000 figure uh, that he cited on MSNBC. The last time he cited Hamas numbers, officials here dismissed it as a reference to publicly available data. But I would assume that the U.S. has its own assessment of, of what the death We've toll is. We've been very clear here. We There are public available data that you all have, you all also are taking a look at that we are citing as well. That's what we're talking about. That's what the president <laughs> Two, you could use whatever you want. I'm just saying that but we we have said we've been really clear. There are publicly available. No, you haven't attacks. been clear. You lie through your teeth. You're a propagandist. I hope they're paying you a lot of money to destroy your reputation. They use the Hamas numbers. They use it against Israel. They use it at the U.N. They use it when standing next to the reprobate, the king of Jordan. They use it on Capitol Hill. They use it in their propaganda to the river to the sea crowd. They use it day in and day out and all the time. Numbers from Hamas and nobody else. That's why she didn't tell us what the number is. When we come back, we're going to have a special guest, a gentleman whose piece I read to you in part last night. Professor of Statistics and Data Science at Wharton. His name is Abraham Weiner, W-Y-N-E-R. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure. 
Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Abraham Weiner is professor of statistics and data science. I never did well at that, by the way. At Wharton, University of Pennsylvania. Professor, how are you, sir? I'm very good. How are you? I'm fine. I would have flunked your course just so well, badly. It's not know, even funny. There's a, there's a lot of great inflation today, so I'm not sure you would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for the guts to do what you're doing, because apparently just expressing your view these days is a very dangerous thing. Let me ask you a question, Professor. You wrote this piece in the tablet that I referenced extensively last night to explain these Hamas numbers. And in yeah. plain English, for some of us who are not very good at statistics and data, what did you find and what did you say? So it's, uh, it's actually a, 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 not a trivial story. It begins by asking the question, um, can, is there anything that we're hearing that just doesn't make common sense, that, doesn't, that just strikes us as odd? And so there was a lot of that. And the first, the first thing that struck most observers of what Hamas was telling us is that 72% of the, of the casualties that we're reporting, nearly 30,000 now, are women and children. And they're also reporting that about 25% are um, fighters, and presumably those are men, which leaves just where it happened to the, happened to the, the non-fighting men. And that was a big mystery. And the other, of course, issue is that Israel itself has been saying that it's been killing fighters uh, at about twice the rate that Hamas is reporting. And, and so Hamas's numbers, which come from its own ministry, um, is really almost questionable from the, from the very first um, observation. So that leads us to a, a statistical question is, if we look at the data that's being released, and we assume that there is, it, it, it's not exact, it's not, it's not real, um, because of the problems that I just mentioned, is there anything in the data that can help us identify um, and demonstrate that they're messing around with the numbers? And so what I did was I looked at that data. Um, and there isn't much of it because it's aggregated, and I was looking at specifically at data where we were giving a breakdown on a daily basis of men and women and children. And I looked at that, a stretch of data from uh, towards the end of October, mid, mid to late October to um, uh, um, mid to late uh, November, and I looked just at that data to try to determine if I could see anything that rep that just was nonsense and couldn't possibly be, and that would confirm what m most people were thinking is, which is Hamas is suppressing the number of uh, of, uh, of, fi of fighters and increasing the number of women and children. And one of the things you find, and your graph is really very helpful too. One of the things you find is. The numbers really never change, whether they whether their right. apartment buildings hit, whether there's uh, whether the tunnels are the focus, the enormous number that they record of women and children dying versus, I guess, terrorists and men dying. Explain that. So the thing that the first tip off to me, in fact, I had actually seen this uh, very um, what we call constant or low variance day to day in the numbers of casualties reported. I'd seen that earlier and I saw it in the data I looked at. And it just didn't make sense to me because you should be seeing a, well, pretty large swings in the number of casualties on a given day, particularly if you throw in the fighters, because of the plans of operations and what, what's being targeted. And that's the kind of thing that changes and certainly changes over a multi-week period. And it wasn't. It was lining up at just under 300 with very little variation. And if you plotted the total casualties, it looked almost like a perfect straight line. And that's, that was a tip off to me that something isn't right, that they're probably moving the numbers around from category to category. 
so that they can create a story that they want to tell. Now, I, I can't, it's not just positive. I can't prove this. It's just as a speculation that this is what they're doing and it explains what we're observing. So one of the things that I observed was this very low variability from day to day that just didn't make any sense. The other thing I, I observed, and this is, the, this is in some sense much worse of a, of, a, of a conundrum to a statistician, is that the number of children was uncorrelated with the number of women dying every day. They were just bouncing all over the place, what we call in an, an uncorrelated way. And that doesn't make sense either, because if women are dying because of the operations, then children should be dying and, and vice versa. And when there's low operation in attacks apartment buildings, as opposed to tunnels, for example, then you'd see um, more children and women. And when it's attacking tunnels and other operations that are more military, uh, or when things are just plain quiet, the two numbers should move together in a, in a correlated way. And they were moving in an uncorrelated way. And that seems that suggests that they're moving or are artificially changing the, the, the categorization, the breakdown. Let me ask you this. This may be a little bit out of your area. Are you familiar? Does the federal government have people do what you do, statisticians and data scientists and so forth? I imagine they have a lot of them, right? Well, I mean, I would imagine they do. Um, This is, uh, I mean, I have to say, most people who who have observed Hamas's data just immediately are, are, are suspicious of it because they have a very long history of making up stuff. And it goes back, way back to the Second Intifada, when there was a tradition of faking injuries, faking um, uh, absents for for the camera in what what is called Pallywood. And they've many times talked about massacres and hundreds hundreds and hundreds of people dying that turned out to be false. There was a classic one in Janine during the Second Intifada. In, In this most recent battle with Hamas, there was the hospital that was claimed to have been attacked by Israel with 500 casualties that turned out to be not true. So anyone observing the numbers is, should be suspicious right away. The question is, should you be able to look at the numbers and find evidence that they have been tampered with? And that's something that is, takes a, a desire to do it. It's not that hard if you look for it. And, um, but the other issue is, at the end of the day, what are you going to do with it? Say it's something that everybody knows? Well, apparently there's an appetite for learning more about this. Well, and you also say in the article that these deaths are not all caused by the IDF. I mean, Hamas is killing its own people. They have rocket rockets that launch in the wrong direction or blow up on the spot. We saw that with another hospital about three, three and a half months ago, correct? Yes. So we do not know how to distinguish between deaths that are caused by Hamas, deaths that are caused by their own inadvertent uh, inadvertent rocketry, deaths that are caused by their own gunfire their, at, at their own population. And we don't know even how to distinguish mortality, just normal mortality. Um, and none of that's broken down. And we wouldn't expect it to, but the story that's coming out from Hamas is a very, tells up and gives a picture that is Israel is actually not fighting Hamas, but it's fighting the Palestinian population, which is a propaganda story. And, and the goal is to sort of see if you can see in the data evidence that that is, in fact, a story and not reality. And it's being used all over the place, everywhere. State of the Union address, newspaper articles, media outlets of other sorts. It's being used uh, 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 by Hamas itself, College. of course. Colleges, College yeah. campuses, where, where I am, this is being I hope used you have tenure. bludgeon Jews. I do, um, thankfully. Probably wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. Um, bottom line is, is that they are used, and it's interesting because in the beginning, particularly, you know, more, more conservative news outlets were being careful with the data. They're saying it comes from Hamas, it comes from their ministry. Everybody knows that this is, we don't know how verifiable it is. But then over time, those qualifications were starting to disappear. And that's one of the reasons why I was motivated to write this, because that caveat, that crucial caveat that these numbers come from the enemy was just dropped, being dropped everywhere. And mm-hmm. I felt that was extremely upset and disappointed about that. I mean, even Lloyd Austin who has talked about these numbers, mm-hmm. the Pentagon had to officially backtrack the numbers saying, well, wait a minute, he doesn't necessarily believe them. This, these come from Hamas, and that, that is something that we should be careful with. But the, you hear these lines being, being, um, being described. Historically, mm-hmm. Hamas numbers turned out to be accurate. And Let me just tell a- you this. We have to go. Your article and your it's fantastic. Your analysis is fantastic, and we're definitely going to want to have you back. Thank you, Professor, and God bless you, my friend. And we will be right back. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. 
no four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Mark Levin, tough as hell. That's why I like Mark Levin. And I'm not sure a lot of people like him. He's tough as hell. But I like him. I love him. Call in now. 877-381-3811. That's the man. If you don't support and vote for him, we're going to lose the country. It's that simple. It's that simple. Sometimes plain English is the best. Where am I, Mr. Producer? Oh, yes. Are you an individual or a business owner facing the heavy burden of back taxes, levies, wage garnishments? It's a very tough time for a lot of people. They can barely keep their head above water. They're trying to make ends meet. And yet these tax burdens are killing them. And by the way, in his proposed budget, Joe Biden is proposing the most massive tax increase in American history. He proves he's an imbecile every day. There are endless efforts to smear, character assassinate, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, let me tell you a little inside baseball. It's more complicated than it needs to be, the way the Israeli government functions. The various parties, you have an election, and they have a certain number of seats in the Knesset, their parliament, that they win. And there's 120 members of that parliament, so you need to get 61 seats in order to control the government and have the prime minister. And so you have these coalitions of parties and what the Biden administration has been trying to do is destroy the Netanyahu coalition. And many of these coalition parties have positions in the cabinet because as I said, it's a coalition government. One of them is Gantz. He has this so-called United Blue and White Party or whatever it is which in, itself, in and of itself is made up of a coalition of, smarter, of smaller parties, still in the minority. So Netanyahu has been the subject of a coup effort by this administration to overthrow his government. Because as I said last night, the only Israeli government Joe Biden likes is the Israeli government that does what he tells it to do. Then he embraces Israel fully. Otherwise, he goes after the prime minister, whether it's Menachem Begin or whether it's Benjamin Netanyahu. But it's Netanyahu's job to represent his country, to protect his people. It's not Joe Biden's job. He doesn't even do that for us. And so what happened today, or I guess yesterday in Israel, is very important. One of the member parties of the Gantz Party Coalition. Remember Gantz? He came to the United States against Prime Minister Netanyahu's urgings. He met with Biden. He met with others to undermine the prime minister, even though he's part of this national security government, if you will, as Netanyahu wanted to broaden the appeal of the government and the unity of the country. Well, Gantz stabbed him in the back. Okay, so one of the little parties that's part of the Gantz party coalition has said, we're leaving. It's led by a man who used to be part of the Netanyahu party, the Likud. But he joined the other side, Bennett and Lapid, for a period of time. But today he announced, no, I and the members of my party, that is the members of the Knesset, are moving to Netanyahu. So the Netanyahu government went from around 61 Knesset members to about 69 a very significant majority for Israel. There's another coalition party, which has mostly Russians in it, Russian Jews, and many of them 
newly emigrated to Israel, led by this guy Lieberman. Strange dude, fairly conservative, but he doesn't like Netanyahu. There's now rumors that he's going to join with the Likud party, which would shoot their numbers up to 75. That is historic almost, modern Israel time. So what is happening is the more Biden and Blinken are trying to destroy the commander-in-chief and his coalition, even though they all don't love each other, let me tell you that, now what's happening is pushback. Because you don't hear it on CNN or MSNBC, you really don't hear it anywhere, that the vast majority of the Israeli people, except the Marxists, like our Marxists in our country, who are trying to destroy their own country for their own power, the Ehud Barak crowd, the Lapid crowd, the radical leftists in Israel, like the radical leftists in America. Power and party first for these people. Same in our country. But that the country is strongly united against a Palestinian state, given what's happened. They're strongly united. They want Hamas defeated. They want the leadership of Hamas destroyed. They want the IDF to go into Rafah, which has the last battalions of Hamas there, exactly what the Israelis have been fighting and dying for. They've surrounded them. And Biden and Bernie Sanders, who's a self-hater, extraordinary self-hater, because he's a Marxist, has a lot more in common with the Islamists than the Israeli Jews. They're all saying, you go in there, and we are now going to limit the amount of munitions we give you, and we're going to tie them to our objectives, not to the objectives of the Israeli government and people in trying to protect and defend themselves. That is disgusting beyond belief. Trying to topple this government and then trying to withhold armaments from them. And then on top of that, you ready for this? There's a piece by Adam McCray who ought to get a Pulitzer Prize over there, Free Beacon. And he says in there, these, uh, these restrictions on Iran that Biden lifted before, they're up for renewal. And Biden is going to lift them again. Another more than $10 billion, Mr. Producer, is going to flow into Iran. $10 billion flowing into Iran while we're trying to take out Netanyahu. And while the Vice President of the United States, as dumb as she is, she knows how to repeat pointed lines that have been handed to her, telling you there's a difference between the Prime Minister and the Israeli people. And the Prime Minister answered that today. He said, excuse me, I'm carrying out the will of the Israeli people. That's what I'm here to do. There's no, no gap between what I'm doing and what the Israeli people want despite your best propaganda and your best efforts to try and create one. So here's this piece in the Times of Israel. After the APAC speech, this is this sort of moderate American Jewish group. I don't have much uh, care for them. You know, both sides of the uh, both sides of the line. But after the APAC speech alleging allies oppose Israel's right to defend itself, the Prime Minister was said to be fuming at U.S. intelligence report that cited public distrust in him, predicted he may lose power. So Biden then pulls together his intel agencies, as we know, for the most part, are Democrat operations now. They've conquered our intelligence agencies. And then they provide an assessment to Biden that Netanyahu's Prime Ministership isn't long for Israel because the people are going to rise up, there's going to be protests, and they're going to throw them out. Let me suggest to you that that is exactly what Biden is trying to create. That is what Blinken's trying to create. That's what Bernie Sanders, Thomas Friedman, and the other reprobates are trying to create. They're trying to create disunity in Israel where there's unity. They're trying to undermine the existing government in Israel. They're trying to prevent Israel from winning its war. They're lying about the Hamas numbers. You just heard from the professor, right from the horse's mouth. They don't even make any sense, even at a surface level. And so let me read this to you. A, senior, a very senior, quote-unquote, Israeli official hit back today at U.S. intelligence report published overnight. So they leak it, of course. That's what Biden does. The war and the viability of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government may be in jeopardy amid criticism over the management of the war against Hamas terror group in Gaza. There's very little criticism about this in Israel. They want this terrorist group wiped off the face of the earth. 
Those who elect the prime minister of Israel are the citizens of Israel and no one else, said the official in a statement issued to the media, interpreting the intelligence report as an effort to unseat Netanyahu. <clears throat> exactly. He said Israel, or she, Israel is not a protectorate of the United States, but an independent and democratic country whose citizens are the ones who elect the government. We expect our friends to act to overthrow the terror regime of Hamas and not the elected government in Israel. In an assessment of Israel, the U.S. wrote all kinds of nasty things. Opening its main nightly news broadcast in Israel, Channel 12 said that the statement came from the most senior Israeli political source you can imagine, indicating it was Netanyahu himself, and that the U.S. report had left the Prime Minister fuming. Good, he should be angry. Netanyahu has decided to embark upon strong public and dramatic confrontations with the President of the United States, said Channel 12. He must do that. He must do that. In the same intelligence report, the U.S. observed Israel will likely be challenged by Hamas for years to come. By the way, our intelligence has gotten everything conceivable wrong about Israel fighting Hamas. The casualties, the length of time, and all the rest of it. There you have it. Let me be clear, the Prime Minister continued, Israel will win this war no matter what. To win the war, the Prime Minister said... Israel must destroy the remaining Hamas battalions in Rafah. If not, Hamas will regroup, rearm, and reconquer Gaza. There, this, that is an intolerable threat to our future. We will not accept it. We will destroy Hamas, free our hostages, and ensure that Gaza doesn't pose a threat to Israel again. Don't you wish we had a leader who spoke like this, who talked like this? What you're listening to here, and I mean this, and history will, will prove me right. I'll be gone, but history will prove me right. Netanyahu is the modern-day Churchill. Look what Israel is surrounded with. Look at the, the effort from, to destroy him from elements within. Look at the effort of the United States funding Iran, funding Hamas, funding Hezbollah, funding the PLO, funding the Houthis, funding terrorism, while at the same time threatening Israel. This is how Biden is using our reputation in the principles of the United States. Netanyahu said, you cannot support Israel's goal of destroying Hamas and then oppose Israel when it takes actions necessary to achieve that goal, to destroy Hamas. You cannot say that you oppose Hamas's strategy of using civilians as human shields and then blame Israel for the civilian casualties that result from Hamas' cynical strategy. For Israel, every civilian death is a tragedy. For Hamas, every civilian death is a strategy. He said it is wrong and immoral to hold Israel to a standard for avoiding civilian casualties that no other country on earth is held to. But it won't matter, because Biden's thrown in with Hamas, as has his party. And not just for the votes, by the way, certainly that's one of the reasons. But they've become the intellectual, excuse me, not intellectual, the ideological special pleader for Iran. If you're going to fund Iran, defend Iran, not even hit Iran when it kills three American soldiers, you're aiding and abetting the enemy, and in my view, you're committing treason. Joe Biden is not only corrupt, he's not only an unindicted criminal, his acts with our ally Israel and his acts on our border are the acts of treason. Quote me on that, you punks at media and elsewhere. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. 
Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Holy mackerel. One big, powerful hour next. Don't miss it. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Joe Biden's very worried about the debt. And he keeps reminding us he's a capitalist. If you're a capitalist, you don't need to keep reminding people that you're a capitalist. Biden is not a capitalist. He's a socialist. He is a cultural Marxist. That's what he's become. That's the way he's ending his career. The way he's going to live the rest of his life. And he has a proposed budget out there. John Christensen, writing at the New York Post, Biden unveils massive $7.3 trillion budget. Ladies and gentlemen, just a few years ago, it was under $4.5 trillion. This is a death budget. A debt to the country, a debt to your family, a debt to our currency. A $7.3 trillion budget with a $5.5 trillion in tax hikes. So he's going to destroy the industrial base of America. How blue-collar workers, and I don't think there's that many, can support Biden. How unions can support Biden, I will never know. You destroy the golden goose, you destroy the golden eggs. President Biden unveiled this election year budget pitch Monday calling for $5.5 trillion in tax increases by raising rates on wealthy and corporations. They love that word wealthy. They can't really define it. They all want to live it. You got like Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, two socialists, economic socialists, but overall Marxists who are multimillionaires. And they want to spend $7.3 trillion on on their budget the fiscal year 2025 budget which is highly unlikely to be approved by congress now the answer is it won't be matches last year's top line tax increase level and spends 300 billion dollars more while purportedly cutting the federal deficit by three trillion dollars over the next 10 years i am so sick of these ponzi schemes proposed by these democrats who want you to believe that they're going to spend trillions more, yet cut trillions from our budget, only go after the wealthy, when in fact they can't do any of it without going after everybody. How many more decades do we have to acknowledge this? And talk about inflation. Oh my God. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget noted the Office of Management and Budget estimates project the national debt which surged, ready to this, to $45.1 trillion. Right now, it's $34.5 trillion. Biden would surge it by $11 trillion more, over 1.5% of the gross domestic product by 2034. By 2034. In 10 years. Brian Rydell, a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute, focusing on the budget and taxes, told the Post... That the president's proposals would saddle the U.S. with the highest sustained income tax burden in American history as a share of the economy. But we're only going after the rich. That's what Biden always says. And who pays the price? Working Americans. Inflation. The cost of vehicles, new and used. The cost of fixing vehicles. The cost of fueling vehicles. The cost of utilities. The cost of food. Housing. It's, it's. Rydell added that the proposals amount to even bigger tax hikes down the road when it's time to rein in the debt. Why? Because this is a generation of Democrats who will destroy the next generation. And they don't give a damn. They just want their power. 
let me explain what happens when you have econo- economic uh, dissolution like this that they're creating here. Government gets ever stronger. Remember what happened during COVID? When there was a pandemic and they created a fear and they created an entire atmosphere. Everybody was relying on the government. The government was telling everybody what to wear, where to stand, whether or not they go outside, inside, go in the ocean. You could buy booze, but you couldn't go to a church or a temple. You can get an abortion, but you couldn't get to it under the doctor. This is what they're doing. That's like a dry run. And Speaker Johnson said the price tag on Biden's proposed budget is yet another glaring reminder of this administration's insatiable appetite for reckless spending and the Democrats' disregard for fiscal responsibility. I'll say. And you're all going to pay for it. Now, the man's 81 years old. If he gets this, I don't know. I don't know what the lifespan is. Let's say he lives another 15 years. Doubtful, maybe whatever it is. This really won't affect him. Now, Biden floated some of his budget proposals during the State of Confusion speech, raising the income tax rate for corporations to 28 percent, which means many of you who work for businesses will be fired. I mean, the money has to come from somewhere. It's going to come from you. And it has a trickle down effect. They're not going to expand. So that'll affect construction workers. That'll affect people who work on roads, people who lumber, people who electricians and plumbers and roofers and bricklayers and everybody else. He's going to bring the minimum corporate tax rate from 15% up to 21%. Should we be clapping? Is that good? And what's the government going to do with our money? It doesn't have enough? And do you think that's going to stop them from deficit spending? They're hoarding our money. They're hoarding our money. They're creating massive debt. Politicians don't know how to run an economy. All they know how to run is their mouths. And they're going to impose all these fiscal and economic disasters onto our shoulders. And God forbid our children and grandchildren. It's going to be horrendous. And then he he hands you a cookie, you see. He says, here, come here, I'm going to give you cookies. Even worse, he's like the guy in a raincoat on the corner, Mr. Producer, with candy in his pockets. Come over here, I have a gift for you. One of those. He also called for more than $400 monthly in mortgage rate credits and 25% tax on billionaires. So if you're a billionaire and you're getting a 25% tax, what are you going to do, America? And we're not even sophisticated on this tax. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You'll move. Either to another country or you'll move your business offshore and you'll make the headquarters offshore. You think they're going to pay another 25% tax? And nor should they. This is Marxist jealousy. It's built into the system. Why do I care if the guy next door is a billionaire, trillionaire, whatever the guys were? Why does that affect me? It doesn't affect my life. It doesn't mean I'm going to get less. You get off your ass and you make something of yourself. I'm supposed to care that the billionaire is making this and the billionaire, maybe the billionaire deserves it. Maybe they created something absolutely incredible, saving hundreds of thousands of lives or employing tens of thousands of people. So he's a billionaire. Why do I care? Why does the government care? The government doesn't seem to care that it's now hoarding tens of trillions of dollars. It doesn't care about any of it. Does it? It immunizes itself from the economy. It immunizes its employees from the economy. So we're supposed to worry about billionaires. I don't care about billionaires. What does it have to do with anything? Oh, you must not be for the little guy. Now you're screwing the little guy. And so it's always the propaganda. And yet the billionaires don't pay it. We know this. They lie all the time, these Democrats. He says, under my plan, nobody earning less than 400000 a year will pay any additional penny in federal taxes. May I ask you folks that don't earn anything close to $400,000 a year, do you think you're doing better? And so when they spend money like this, they create inflation. Inflation takes money out of your pocket. It takes it out of your savings. It takes it out of your pension. Takes it out of your Social Security check. But Biden says, that's not a tax. No, no, no. That's the price we pay for massive, unlimited, irresponsible, fraudulent, big government. The White House claims the revenue from the new taxes would help prevent the insolvency of Medicare. While paying for two thousand, 
The insolvency from Medicare is, is almost upon us. And the politicians in Washington have known this for 25 years. Here's the secret. You could take every penny from the bill, every billionaire in this country. And you couldn't fund the government for more than a month or two. That's it. Their money's gone. That money's gone. I'll give you an example. Whatever happened to the settlements with the cigarette companies? Hundreds of billions of dollars. Remember that, Mr. Producer? It was going to flow into our hospitals, our health care system, our medical system. Where is it? It's gone. It's gone. Has there been any improvements as a result of taking that money? Not a penny. Where is it? It's nowhere. It's gone. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Kat Kamek, representative from Florida, is a real fighter for liberty and our principles. How are you, ma'am? Hey, Mark. It's good to be with you. Thanks for having me. Good to be with you as well. So I understand um, some Republicans are getting pressure, among others, to mm-hmm. back off their demand that Tic Tac, or whatever they want to call themselves, <laughs> Tic Tac, no, I'm kidding you, that they want to be, uh, that, that they, they shouldn't be divested, bought by an American company sometime in the next six months or dissolved. What the hell's going on? I tell you, Mark, I have not seen anything like this in a long time. And to be honest, it's pretty disgusting. You have seen in the last 48 hours an army of lobbyists descend on Capitol Hill, uh, putting the pressure campaign on members of Congress. You have seen uh, historic levels of lobbying dollars going to preventing the div- Oh, yeah, yeah. We just lost you, Congresswoman. We're going to. Tr- uh, can we try and get her back, or is she going to call us, or what? We'll call her back. Tick tack, tick tock. The clock has stopped. Hey, I'm Robert Frost. I've heard this too. You've got this billionaire. You've got the communist Chinese operations as well. Uh, you've got all the bottom feeders. They're fighting like hell to make sure that they can save TikTok. TikTok is owned by a communist front group, corporation, an umbrella corporation. They spread propaganda in this country. They're poisoning the minds of our children. What's that? Are you there? Can you hear me, Mark? Yeah, can okay. you hear me? I guess TikTok, TikTok cut us off. Just kidding. Anyway, let's start over. What's going on up there? No, it's just been this absolutely disgusting... Uh, lobbying push, pressure campaign on members of Congress. And, of course, we've seen what TikTok did with putting out not just a push notification to its 170 million users to call their member of Congress, but it actually utilized, tapped into the geolocation data of each user. And if you were in the Energy and Commerce Committee's district, one of those members on the committee, You couldn't access the app until you called that member of Congress through the app, which actually backfired because people were saying, I don't need to be doing the work of the Chinese Communist Party. So we had people actually deleting the app off their phones. But the lobbying effort has been truly, truly astounding. They are breaking records as we speak for the number of lobbyists and the dollars spent in trying to keep this in place in the United States. They've bought a lot of influence in and around Washington, D.C. as well. So-called conservative organizations and think tanks, so-called conservative operatives. Isn't that right? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the the FEC reports are going to blow people's minds when they track the dollars down and they find out where all this is leading into. And, of course, you know, there's folks that have a vested interest, a financial interest in making sure that this stays going. But the thing that I question is the CCP's own foreign minister has come out and said that they will not allow for TikTok to be divested from ByteDance, which is curious to me because as a shareholder, if you were in the position to have shares and a financial interest in the company, it should be about making money, right? So Mm. you would stand to make a windfall 
from a divestiture. But instead, it seems like their motives are actually coming clear. They see this as a weapon of war. They see this as a tool in asymmetric warfare. It's not about the dollars because people would stand to make billions of dollars through divestiture. But that doesn't seem to be the end goal here, which is really interesting. And, of course, the data tells a very scary story itself about how this app is being utilized right now with the Gaza war. How is it being utilized right now? Well, most people would be shocked to know that over 50 percent of the free Palestine content, the pro Hamas content on the platform, it actually originates in Indonesia, Malaysia, Pakistan, Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Over 50 percent of that kind of content is created and pushed into the U.S. TikTok streams from those countries. So people who think this is some organic push happening in the United States, they don't realize that this is coming from overseas. I don't understand the complete lack of patriotism of some of our friends. Uh, it doesn't take too much money to buy them off. It really does drive me nuts, and some of them are my friends. And um, I understand it in the Democrats. They're easy, easy pickings. But... But not this. And I see it also, Congresswoman, but Qatar. Qatar has its hands in everything, including yeah. the education of the American people. They buy lobbyist groups. They buy athletic events. You see with the Hamas front group and their networks, groups like CARE and Students for Justice in Palestine, all this foreign money flowing into the United States by our enemies, by people who want to undermine us. And you and some other patriots are taking a stand and say, no, we're going to do something about this. Let's draw the line. Everybody says we got to we got to draw the line with China. And here you're trying to do something that isn't about a shooting war. It's about putting an end to this. Now, don't uh, isn't it true that uh, and I think The New York Post did a good expose on this. Isn't it true that one of the big American billionaires is also a financial investor in, in the mother company that owns TikTok? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that would be ByteDance. And I think that I think he owns 21 percent. I forget I his name. Has, I think it's Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And Is you know, he involved in this lobbying effort? I have no doubt. Stake. I'm sorry. Is he involved in the lobbying effort? It's got to be. You know, I have. I haven't I haven't talked to Jeff Yass myself personally, um, mm -hmm. but I do know that he's actively involved with different organizations and all the organizations that he has ties to. They all are coming out adamantly against this bill. Like Club and for Growth. So, exactly. And that's really disappointing to me. That is truly disappointing because they are misrepresenting what this bill is. And I've heard some things from friends of mine on the Hill who are saying, oh, I'm not going to support this because of this organization. And I said, listen, I'm standing on principle. And this is a national security risk. This mm -hmm. is a principled vote. And I cannot be bought or bullied. So mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel very strongly about this. And I'm very concerned that people are misrepresenting what this bill actually does. They're also misrep excuse me, misrepresenting your philosophy and your position and not just you but the other they claim that you know uh that this is a unconstitutional move of course it's not that this violates free speech no the enemy doesn't have a right to spread lies in our country that's not part of the first amendment it's not even close and then they claim that uh, this is really a libertarian view that we should be messing around with our companies i'd like to hold you over i'd like you to address these in my view, these preposterous claims, where well, they're trying to camouflage the real efforts here into some kind of an American form of patriotism. We'll be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. We're here with Representative Kat Kamik, um, Congresswoman Du. Members of our party, your party up there, understand that this vote, in many respects, will be sort of a vote determining who stands for good and who does not? You know, I'm not sure that a lot of members are seeing it that way. I feel so many of my colleagues are trying to pretzel twist themselves into justifications to vote against it. 
and and I'll say quite honestly, I feel like this is a populism versus conservatism moment where people are leaning into what they're seeing online and saying, ooh, you know, there's all this information out there. doesn't matter that it's not true, but there just is this perception of what the bill actually is. And so they're, they're falling for it. And to me, that's exceptionally dangerous because populism without principles is dangerous. And so from my standpoint, I have made it very clear that I am, as an original co-sponsor of this legislation, obviously in favor. And I see folks who are waffling and saying, you know what? If you want to go and be a foot soldier for the Chinese Communist Party, that's your prerogative. But it is a danger to the United States. This is the canary in the coal mine. And don't believe for one second that the CCP is going to not use this in the future for, say, when they invade Taiwan or something else happens in a major world event and they need to sway public policy. This is a moment. It's a defining moment, as you said, Mark. And I know I'm going to be on the right side of history. Yes, you are. And these others are not because we're already in a Cold War with communist China. It's just that Mm -hmm. psychologically too many people in this country, starting with the uh, meathead at the top, if you don't mind, don't understand that or don't want to recognize it. China has its tentacles in this country. It has its tentacles in our defense industry. It has its tentacles in our colleges and universities. It is pushing people over the open border. And we're going to actually have so-called conservatives and Republicans say this is a libertarian issue or this is a freedom of speech issue. Uh, I mean, can you imagine Republicans saying that in the face of the Third Reich? Can you imagine Republicans saying that when we're facing down an enemy that is building a military, they hope, second to none, aimed at us? What, what, uh, and because some billionaire and others are spreading their money around and threatening people and there's lobbyists in Washington, D.C., I'll tell you what that is, Kat. That is a... That is a society that is utterly unraveling, starting with the ruling class, no? Absolutely. No, you're 100% right. And I am so sick and tired of hearing about the, the, the argument that somehow this is about uh, constitutional rights. I will not be lectured to about constitutional rights and protection by a nation that is actively engaged in a genocide, China, China, who has no regard for human rights, and they want to start saying that all of a sudden they care about Americans' First Amendment rights, let me be clear, there's nothing in this bill of content moderation, not a single thing. All it says is that you cannot be owned by a foreign adversary, and that adversary term is defined in U.S. code. It has nothing to do with the First Amendment, and the last time I checked, espionage was not one of the five tenets of the First Amendment. Mm-hmm. But I dare, I dare some of my colleagues on both sides, Republican and Democrat, to stand there and name the five tenets of the First Amendment. And I bet you $100, no, you know, I'll up it, $1,000, Mark, I bet you $1,000 that more than 50% cannot name the five tenets of the First Amendment. I guarantee I you that. And that's now. one of the problems. They're yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the problems. take your 1000 bucks. <laughs> but all that said, you know, there are there are issues and there are issues. This isn't yeah. something about a bike path or something. This is a big no. deal. This is the it enemy is. of the United States. I mean, people make excuses for Putin. They make excuses. How do you make an excuse for this when they're literally brainwashing our children and they have a foothold in the propaganda of the United States and you claim it's a First Amendment issue? Look, I'm a constitutional. I can't even figure out how it's a First Amendment issue. You're talking about another company owning them. So how's that a First Amendment issue? And you're talking about, if not, we're going to divest them. Gee, we've never taken out other companies in this country. We put them out of business for a thousand different reasons. I'm not in favor of it. But this is the communist Chinese. This is what they're doing. There is no excuse that works. None, as far as I'm concerned. Any final words? No, I mean, it's basically the equivalent of would we have allowed Germany to control our radio stations and our newspapers during World War II? No. Mm -hmm. Would the Russians have ever had uh, controlling shares of ABC or NBC? No. This is absurd. And when you look around the country... 98% of the U.S. views on TikTok with all the content related to the Israel-Hamas war, it's all Mm pro-Palestinian. 98% of the content dealing with the war is pro-Palestinian. 
That tells you everything you need to know. That's why we have people protesting offices, shutting down airports. This is a direct relation to what is going on on TikTok, and we can prove it. The data shows it. It's not a constitutional issue. It's a national security issue. We need to take a stand now. Otherwise, I fear for what comes around the corner. Did Tokyo Rose have a First Amendment right? I mean, how stupid is all of this, to be perfectly honest with you? Yeah, we'll be Uh watching. We're going to see. When is the vote on this? The vote is at 10 o'clock tomorrow. All right, Mr. Producer, I want us to keep track of the roll call on this and then report it to the American people, okay? The American people are not stupid. They know an enemy, and they're not going to be bamboozled with phrases like, oh, this is First Amendment free speech. They're not going to be bamboozled. Oh, this is libertarian. Oh, they're not. There's nothing American about this. All of it's un-American. There's nothing constitutional about it. There's nothing free market about it. This is a communist diabolical genocidal regime trying to destroy america that has an enormous foothold in our country and is brainwashing our children that's it case closed Absolutely. congresswoman thank you and god bless you my friend i appreciate it say a prayer for us yeah you got it and ladies and gentlemen you can say a prayer i'm all for that but if you want to call your members of the house of representatives i suggest you get on that phone if you want to send them an email i suggest you send that email You either side with America and vote for this bill or you side with communist China. It's that simple. I don't care about the grifters, the billionaires, the lobbyists, the think tanks, the organizations. I don't care what signs they put on their doors or what labels they give themselves. They're either with us or against us. And this is the vote that will determine that. And I just want these members of Congress to understand we're going to get a list of who voted which way. And I will make it public. This I guarantee because you have a right to know. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, don't you love the bottom feeders? They're not even media. They're aggregators. Come to think of it, they're a lot like TikTok. To those saying, oh my God, what will we do? Rumble has already said they'll be happy to buy TikTok. Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary said, I'll put together a group to buy TikTok. I remember when they were saying, oh, oh, if we privatize PBS, what will happen to Sesame Street? And I said, I'll put together a group to buy it. That is a money machine. But of course, it never happened because they didn't, they didn't drop it. But if TikTok is everything that everybody says, 170 million followers and participants, it makes an enormous amount of money and so forth and so on, it wouldn't go out of business. The communist Chinese ownership of it would go out of business. It's that simple. Any other argument is, oh, but uh, Facebook will get bigger. No, it won't. Why would it? So rather than having lobbyists try and prevent the communist Chinese from destroying our youth and our country, Why don't we have lobbyists who represent some other companies who support the divestiture of the communist regime from TikTok and it's purchased by an American company? I thought we believed in America first, Mr. Producer. What the hell happened? What the hell happened? What happened to America first? Now, one other thing. The thing about these bottom feeders, like the Huffington Compost or the Daily Bestiality or Mediocreite and the other sort of conga line of losers and third tier types they always want to fight so i posted my disappointment in club for growth and kellyanne conway when it comes to this issue i didn't try and ruin kellyanne conway i didn't smear kellyanne conway kellyanne conway is a friend she's brilliant she knows how to destroy the democrats And so I support her 100%. Does that mean I have to support everything? No. Does that mean she has to support everything I say? No. See, we're big boys and girls. It's called maturity. But when you're a prebubescent loser, a mediocreite founded by Dan Abrams and his, uh, that dead squirrely paste to the top of his head, or a mediaite, excuse me, or media matters, they're all the same, really, founded by Soros, who's a complete anti-American slob and has run by a president of that company who's a homophobe, an anti-Semite, a racist, and a big... You notice he doesn't sue me. Sue me, a-hole! Give it a shot! Give it a shot! 
Let's get to the bottom of your little operation. And every Anyway, that's where we are. So that's just dishonest, and it's simply not true. But I will fight her and everybody else on this, certainly on the airwaves, and I think you agree. You believe in America first, then you can't believe in China first. And TikTok won't go away. It'll be bought by an American and an American company. And I don't want to hear about the First Amendment. It has nothing to do with the First Amendment. Or libertarianism. Libertarianism is for communism? Look how they twist things. Anything for a buck. Anything for a buck. No, no thanks. Let me tell you how I look at this. And I, You know what is shocking to me? That this even is an issue to discuss. That every conservative Republican isn't on the same side of this. We have an enemy. China. We have a Manchurian president. A president bought and paid for by China. We have them sending millions of dollars to influence the Biden family and Biden policy. They're stealing our technology. They're stealing us blind. They're spying on us. They're putting killer satellites in the sky to destroy our our own satellites, our GPS systems, and our electrical grid. They're arming our enemies. They have military posts. They have naval outlets. They have, quote-unquote, um, this Silk Road policy, which is to expand their military in Central and South America. They have contracts on both sides of the Panama Canal. They have a base in the Solomon Islands, for God's sakes. They have one on West Africa. That's all aimed at us. Their hypersonic missile are far more advanced than ours. And they're aimed at not only hitting us, but doing so without detection, so they can strike at any time. They have more naval ships than we do. They have a much larger military than we do. They have brand new, spanking new, intercontinental, intercontinental nuclear missiles aimed at us and our cities. They're building up their air force. They conquered Hong Kong, which was a free country. They plan to conquer Taiwan. They're stealing islands from the Philippines and the Japanese. They're stealing navigable waters from Vietnam. They're buying off countries in Africa with huge debt. It's led by a genocidal maniac whose real target, his eventual target, is the United States of America. And we're going to allow them to have a foothold in our country? They're not just buying, mil- what is it, over a million acres of land, millions of acres of land in our country, near our military installations. They're spy balloons. People coming across the border. They're sh- pushing them across the border and infiltrate our country. And we're going to sit here and debate whether the First Amendment applies to communist China? Or whether libertarians think this is a good idea? Are you kidding me? What the hell? Do we not stand for anything anymore? Oh, and Zuckerberg and Facebook will get bigger. No, they won't. Not if Rumble or Kevin O'Leary or a thousand other companies or billionaires buy it because it's so profitable. It's a scare tactic. It's a lie. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel. We salute our truckers, freedom fighters everywhere. We salute the Ukrainians. We salute our brothers and sisters in Israel. And most of all, I salute you, the great American people. God bless each and every one of you. See you tomorrow.